I'm Ryan Milton and welcome back to the Iron Palace. This is a show I run every single Tuesday teaching you all about your training. We're going to cover all different aspects. Today, we're going to talk specifically about the three must-have exercises for any bikini competitor's glute training. Okay, Some stuff that you absolutely want to have. We'll talk about the tutorials, we'll talk about the how, the why, the sets and reps and everything you need to do if you're a bikini competitor and you're trying to get the right glutes for a first call out on stage. All right. This show is, I run it every single Tuesday, and it's just one of the awesome five shows I got running all week, so please do me a favor when you get something out of the video today, please share it, please subscribe it, please hit up one bikini competitor friend you got, and send them the video, because this will help everybody, okay? I do this show every single week, they say the body's a temple, and when you got them gains, it becomes a palace, and that's why today, you are on the Iron Palace. Alright, let's get into it, what we're talking about. Is the three exercises that I say are the best, most common, you must haves basically. You gotta have these in there if you train for bikini and trying to get the right glute development. Alright, it's very challenging. A lot of bikini competitors go on stage and their feedback comes back all the time that they need to improve their glute roundness, they need to see a little bit more separation between the glute ham tie, they need to see this and that. If you don't understand, when they're looking at the back pose, they're literally looking at the lower body development, which consists of the legs, the quads, the glutes, the hamstrings, and to the upper body development, okay? So that's what they're looking at. Now, the interesting thing is, judges are sitting below you, right? They're sitting actually down here, two feet below the stage most of the time, looking up. So when the judges are looking up at you, if you don't have the right aesthetic in that pose right there, they're going to see a whole different thing, okay? And so what we see all over the country at variances of bikini competitions. I've been to so many shows. I'm a sponsor on a ton of different shows. I travel around the country and see all sorts of different shows from amateur to professional shows. And what I always see is two very common themes going on here. Okay, Basically, competitors either lean out so much, they totally lose the fullness, they totally lose the roundness of the glute, and that's going to score you down. Or they are too thick, basically. They basically train their glutes way too much and in the wrong ways, and now they have maybe big glute development, but they don't have the right shape, the right size, and it's not proportional. So those are going to be the two things, right? Either dieting too hard and lost your shape and size, or you're overdone and it's going to just basically hurt you. Both these things will hurt your placing. Because in that back pose, they're not going to see that symmetry, right? They're not going to be able to see from upper to lower what's going on if that's not matching, okay? And especially if you don't have your posing right. That's a whole different topic though. I don't want to go off on a tangent and start ranting, but basically Basically, you gotta have the right training program, and as crazy as you might think this is, it's not as complicated as you probably think it is. It's not as complicated as what you might be doing, what your coach might have you be doing, whatever. What you gotta know about your training all the time, and what I wanna say before I tell you these exercises I say are must haves. Everything still has to be custom built for you. Your training, your nutrition, everything. Don't just take these three exercises and go do them for a thousand reps a day and think that it's going to give you a bikini competitor, glute development, and a good physique. It's not, okay? You got to make sure that every part of your training split is built for you. Your nutrition matches your training. You do the right sets and reps. All these things based on your actual physique. When I take a client in, first thing we do is a physique assessment, okay? You want to compete? I'm doing a physique assessment. I want to see where you're at, I want to see what needs to happen, I want to see what I need to do to get you into that first call out with whatever show you're doing, beginner, amateur, you know, regional pro, whatever it is, doesn't matter, you got to build everything just for you, okay, so take that in consideration, make sure you understand that, but here's my big three, the most important things I think you got to have if you're a bikini competitor and you're trying to train your glutes, these are going to be the top, you know, the most bang for your buck, in other words, type exercises just for you. is going to be the iconic hip thrust. All right, hip thrust, 
are basically the most fundamental movement pattern you can possibly imagine for building the glutes, okay? Like they are the number one, it's a great compound exercise. You can load a lot of weight on these. I know that a lot of you are probably like, what, hip thrust right at the gate? You're not talking about squats, Coach Ray? You're not talking about deadlifts? No, I'm not. I'm talking about hip thrusts. Squats have their place, not great for glute development though, contrary to what a lot of people think, a lot of people say, you're mainly training your quads, your thighs, your hamstrings, and other parts of your leg over your glutes when you're doing a squat, and same goes for deadlift. Deadlift, yeah, you got a lot more glute going on, but it's also going to hit your legs, you're going to be doing, you know, your legs, sumo deadlifts, is a lot of quad, a lot of hamstring, whatever. What I would like to do, when we're trying to build a competition physique, is focus on movements that are gonna allow that to exactly happen in a way where I know what's gonna happen, okay? And what I mean by this is on a squat, on a deadlift, you can be doing whatever variation of form, you can be doing whatever way, I don't know if you're using more quad or your glute, you probably don't even know, right? But on a hip thrust, I know for the most part, you're gonna be using your glutes for a majority of it, and it's a great isolation type compound movement, which is a weird thing to say because I'm calling it a compound because obviously other muscles are working, and it's something you can do a lot of weight on, but it's also going to mainly isolate the glute, which is what you want it to do. You want to isolate your glutes so that you can use them in this movement to build them and develop them. So this is going to be a great exercise. You can watch a video right here going on. You're seeing it happening where basically here's how you do the form. You know, you're setting up on a bench. There's all types of variations of hip thrust that you can do, okay? It's not just limited to the bench one with the barbell. You can do a floor one. You can do a single leg one. You can do all types types of variations, I'm not going to get too far in that, you got to have your hip thrusts, okay? Hip thrusts are key, they're so important. In fact, if you want to see a bunch of different variations of hip thrusts, go to my website right now, teamffelex.com, subscribe to the trial and it'll load you up with an example of some different hip thrust type movements you can do and you'll be able to find the ones that fit for you best, okay? What I do when I'm coaching a competitor is I'm going to program them the one that they need the most. Some people need some super heavy hip thrusts. So I'll give a straight barbell on a bench they need to build a lot of that glute girth and so with that I know okay we got to really start hammering this you're gonna have to get stronger we're gonna have to add weight up you're gonna have to really get good at doing the standard compound barbell hip thrust and when you can do that when you get proficient at it when you get better and better at doing it you're gonna definitely see an uh, increase in other words in the glute development and when that happens you're gonna see the roundness you're gonna see the fullness you're gonna see a lot of the important stuff you need to have for bikini coming into play, okay? This is huge that your glutes look full, they look round on stage. You will see that in your front pose even as a bikini competitor if it's done correctly and if you have the proper glute development, you will be able to see it and that's also being scored. So getting the fullness, getting the roundness, getting that shape and aesthetic to match the rest of your body, it's going to come largely from your hip thrusts, okay? And so that's an exercise that's obviously, honestly, probably my number one that you absolutely absolutely should be doing this. I don't honestly think I coach a woman that is not doing hip thrusts in one form or another just because it's such a great glute exercise and competitors need it, lifestyle clients like it. Um, basically, it's a, just an awesome movement. So get proficient at it. Make sure you know the variations. Make sure you understand them. I would not say just stick to one of these variations at all. When I program athletes, I'm programming all different types of variations. Again, totally custom for the physique. It's totally super, totally important that you have it match your physique and what you need to do, okay? And so make sure that you got that down. Understand that you're going to have to do variances and sets and reps too. So if you need to start building a lot of strength, right? Like let's say you start doing your hip thrusts and you're weak, you never done them. Maybe you don't have the, you know, you just don't have that strength yet. You haven't been practicing, you haven't been doing it. There's girls that do three, four hundred, you know, pounds on these things. And you might be down, you know, starting out doing like 90 pounds, whatever, it doesn't matter. Anything that's gonna challenge your body is great. But if you gotta start climbing up in the ranks in your strength, right? Because the stronger that you get, the more reps you can do at heavier weights, which is gonna thus lead to more muscle gains, you gotta train in the strength rep range. And so you're looking at, you Know, training between four, five, six reps and doing maybe four or five sets where you're going to do four, five, six reps. And the goal is 
to be at the end range of that. So when you get to your sixth rep, you couldn't get to eight, right? You couldn't do 10. You wanna make sure you're picking a weight that you're training that strength rep range. And if you do that correctly, you'll start to climb in that strength ranks very, very fast, okay? More of an actual hypertrophy range would be between the eight to 10, you know, the standard kind of level where you're gonna do eight to 10 reps on that exercise to help hypertrophy the muscle, which means growth. But again, you gotta have that strength element involved because if you're not strong enough to do a heavy enough weight, you're going to limit your growth potential even if you are doing the 8 to 10, okay? So what I suggest is that you have a variance of these reps and you might do it on different days. I have most of my competitors doing hip thrust twice a week at a minimum, so you might do one day where it's a strength base, you know, you're doing five sets of five reps and then you might do another day where you're doing three, four sets of eight reps or something like that. And a lot of times, that's what I'm going to have program. that's what I'm going to bring in. I want to have competitors that are able to basically get stronger and also hypertrophy because that's going to lead to, guess what, glute fullness, glute roundness, overall shape and aesthetic that you need for the bikini division. Alright, next on the list would be the glute ham raise, the GHD, the glute ham developer. A lot of you probably like don't even have this machine in your gym. You probably have no idea what I'm talking about. But my competitors, they know all about it. Cause like most of the time if they don't have it, I'm making them create it in one way or another. I actually wrote a blog on my website about how you can create one of these just using like a lat pull down machine which is in most jams. You can also do it on a Smith machine. But it is an important exercise. Go to teamffelex.com and check out the blog slash blog and you will be able to see that blog on there. Uh, I'll put a little, little link somewhere in the notes or something like that for you if you want to check that out. But Basically, the glute ham raise, the glute ham developer, whatever you want to call it. If you do have one, great, that's awesome. If you don't, you got to create one, okay? And this exercise is superior, so good, so damn good for targeting the kind of lower glute in the ham tie. You hear competitors talk about the ham tie all the time. Well, there's not a specific way to build a ham tie. You can't create a ham tie. There's not like a magical ham tie exercise. What a glute ham tie actually is, is good glute development and glute hamstring development. The hamstring and the glute coming together, that insertion point, both of these being so developed, hamstrings developed, glutes so developed, and then the right level of conditioning to where you can see it, okay? But like, girls will be killing themselves trying to get lean, doing tons of cardio, dieting really hard, and they won't show a ham tie because guess what? They don't have the right development. They don't have the right glute development or the hamstring development, and now while it's not something that is scored in bikini you don't need to have a glued ham tie in bikini a lot of people want it for one and you do need to have a tightened glute ham tie area in bikini. They don't need to see, in other words, the deep V cuts of it or anything like that, like you might see in wellness and things like that that will be coming. But you need to for sure have it be not, you know, loose, not stored body fat, in other words. And so a good way to make sure that that's not going on is to train both of these effectively so that you can get the kind of ham tie look going on. All right. So the GHD, the GHR, the glute ham raise, glute ham developer is awesome for this because basically you're starting out that horizontal level, you're hinging down and you're pulling up. And when you're pulling up, you're using hamstring and you're using the lower glute. Okay. So with this, it's going to work the full glute, but we're kind of isolating that specific glute ham tie area. So if you need to tighten that area up, if some of your feedback was, Hey, tighten that up, bring that in a little bit more, or, you know, you just want to make sure that you have the right proper lower glute development to make sure that you're not showing body fat and things like that there. Great exercise for this. It's a must have, in my opinion, you know, most of my competitors, again, are doing this. If they're not, it's for a different reason. Like I said earlier in this video, everything should be custom built for you and your physique. So I will not tell you that you need it. I won't tell you that you absolutely got to have it, but it's something that you should consider involving in because now we take our first exercise, hip thrust, which is overall glute development, girth, kind of roundness, you know, getting the shape and the proportion right. And then this will tighten up any of the areas that could be lackadaisical, loose on you that you need 
need to bring through. You need to show a tightened glute ham tie area and bikini, and this is the way to do it. Bringing it through with the GHR, the glute ham raise, whatever, any type of raise. And again, there's videos on my website, teamffelex.com. You can also just subscribe to the trial, and I'll send you the actual video instructions in the actual trial to show you how to set this up. If you don't have one of those machines, unfortunately, a lot of places don't. A lot of people don't understand the benefit of it. It's a great thing for even lifestyle clients, but especially good for bikini competitors because it's going to help you get that glute ham tight area tightened up and in the right criteria for the bikini division. Last exercise, number three for bikini competitors that I absolutely think you should have some form of variation of is kickbacks, okay? And kickbacks can be done in a number of ways. You can do them on a cable, you can do all different angles, you can do a side kickback, you can do a limited range kickback where you're not kicking all the way up or you're not coming all the way down. You can do full motion, you can do, you know, standing on a box for extended range underneath. You can also do a lot of free weight stuff. You can do one with a dumbbell in the crease of your knee. You you can do some with ankle weights. There's so many different ways you can do kickbacks, and not let alone the machines that do it, or on a leg extension, or on a Smith machine. I mean, it's crazy. I have so many people doing kickbacks of all different variations. It's insane, okay? And it's a great exercise for bikini competitors because it is a ultimate isolation type exercise, okay? And basically, what you get to do with that. You actually get to isolate the glute. This is where you really can bring in the fine tuning of the shape and the aesthetic of the glute muscle, period. And that's absolutely what you need if you want to compete in bikini. What kickbacks really allow you to do is basically you're going to be able to isolate this muscle totally and just shape it out, bring through whatever you need to do, okay? So depending on, again, your own physique and where you need to be and what you need to look like to get into the first cause and win your shows and so on and so forth, you might want to do different variations of these. Limited range of motion could target a different part of the glute, right? If you do a limited range of motion where you come down, you come back up, and you're not coming all the way down, you're going to target more of the upper glute. So if you got feedback, that you need more upper glute roundness, right? You don't have that. That could be a great exercise for you. Maybe you just need more full range of motion. So you can do the full range to get the full shape. Maybe you need some lateral shape coming on the outsides of the glute, right? That outer roundness. Well, maybe you want to do some side kickbacks. And again, there's all different variations. There's so many things that you could do with this, but it is definitely an exercise you want to consider if you're a bikini competitor to get into your routine because with this, you'll be able to fine tune whatever shape and aesthetic you got going on basically that you built with the other two exercises, right? Because we're looking at these being the three exercises I suggest, three things you want to have involved in your bikini competition, uh, glute training program. You can do these in the off season, right? What I call the improvement season. Some of you think of it the off, that's what I'm saying, in the off season. But the season where you're making the gains, you're growing, you're building, you can do these there. You can do these all the way up till show day. Literally, these exercises are superior overall for glute development. I know that a lot of you are gonna come at me and say, hey, what about all the deadlifts? Where's all the stiff leg deadlifts? Where's all the squats? Where's all that? I don't find those superior to these exercises, period. I think these are the most bang for your buck exercises that are gonna bring you into basically the proper shape, size, symmetry, and proportion. Obviously, this is only three exercises. Is your entire glute day, leg day gonna have three exercises? I would think not. You're probably looking at more like five to eight exercises, so you need to bring in some other things. But with that, these three, these are something you could always have that's gonna be great, it's gonna be useful, because if we look at what I just told you, right, Hip thrust being the big bang for the buck exercise to get the development, get the strength, get the girth, get the shape, get the roundness, get all that built in the kind of you know blocky sense where if you were making a clay model, you're slapping the clay on there, building it up, and then now we gotta start shaping it out, right? Because you can't just show up with overdeveloped big glutes. You have to shape them, they have to fit the criteria of the bikini division, okay? And you can't have overdone, it's gotta match your shape, it's gotta match your size, it's gotta match your proportion. That's his bodybuilding. This is what 
what bodybuilding is about. Upper to lower shape, size, symmetry, sh and conditioning. Okay, and so with that, you built out this, you got the blocky, you know, in the sense of like a clay model, we packed all that clay on. Now you gotta shape it out. Glued ham raise is a great way to start doing that. That's how you make sure that everything's in the ham tie area, looking right, staying tight, bringing you to the stage to show the right thing there. Because if you don't have it and you're not showing it, it's not scored, but it will help you if you have the area in the right spot for your criteria, which is a tightened, you know, flattened, you can't be showing extra fat. In other words, you don't want to have rippling and things like that going on in the glued ham tie. So that's going to shape that up. And then finally, our kickback and all the variations we can do are really going to isolate it and really fine tune bring that shape through. And so if you do these three things, you do them in this order even, you know, sprinkle in some other variations. Maybe you do a thing where you do two hip thrusts in your workout. You do one from the floor, you do one from the bench. Uh, you could do, you know, variances of kickbacks and side kicks and all different types of kickbacks. You can do a couple in the same workout. And these things are going to be great for shaping your glutes, for building you out, getting you where you need to be for the bikini division and that's absolutely huge. If you want additional help with this, if you're serious about training for bikini and you're like, whoa dude, I just heard everything you said, I didn't know what half of that shit meant, but I like those exercises, those exercises are good, whatever, I'm going to try it out. If you want to get a better experience, if you want to really take it to the next level, go to my website right now, teamffalex.com, subscribe to the free trial. Me or one of my coaches can get you set up on a glute training program example free in our trial for like a week. We'll set it up for you, we'll show you what's up. We'll show you how to structure these, how, what kind of hip thrust might be good, what kind of uh, kickbacks, other exercises that you should go into that I didn't mention in this video because there are going to be more obviously because after these three, there's going to be another three and another three and then so on and so forth down the list and it's all going to be different for your physique at that point. So. If you want additional help, you want to get with some of the best coaches in the game and have us train you for free, literally for free for seven days, subscribe to that trial right now and we will guide you through it. We'll show you how to do it and help you really get there because again, it doesn't matter if you're in the off season. It doesn't matter if you're in the improvement season. It doesn't matter if you're on prep right now. It doesn't matter if you haven't even competed. You're just thinking about the idea. It's a great thing to get involved in the type of training and experience new things and you know see what works for your body and see what works best and I'll tell you what I always know works best for all competitors all around the board across the entire thing is the total customization and that's what we do on Team Flex that's what I believe in we build everything custom to each person from every set every rep every nutrition all that and so you know with that you got to understand that there's going to be always a variance you don't want to just do a copycat plan you don't want to just take whatever a lot of coaches are pushing out the same generic PDF program to all the bikini girls and it's not the way you need to do it if you want to be your best if you want to perform your best if you don't want to waste your time and your money you get the custom approach and you can get that for free right now at teamffalex.com will show you how to train your glutes for the best bikini competition physique that you need to win your show and get in that first call out and with that I'm gonna tell you tomorrow I'm gonna be right back here with first call outs telling you exactly how to get into first call outs with everything we run on Wednesday and this is the Iron Palace please make sure you share this please make sure you subscribe please make sure you give me a thumbs up let me know what you think what other exercises do you like comment tell me let me know what you think about what I just said today and thank you for watching I'll be back tomorrow for first call outs this is Coach Rye on the Iron Palace Coach Rye is out